Hey boys and girls, we're gonna pick back up where we left off reading yesterday if you lived in colonial times. And what we were reading yesterday said, did children go to school? Some did and some didn't. The first school that boys and girls went to in colonial days was called a dame school. The teacher was a woman and, her ch and the children came to her house. In dame school, children learned to read and write. Did they have school books? Older children used a book called the New England Primer. Children in dame school used a special kind of school book called a horn book. It was not a real book with pages to turn. It was a piece of wood with a printed page on each side of it. The horn book got its name from the thin sheet of horn that covered the page. You could see right through the horn. As soon as the children learned to read and write everything that was on the horn book, they were finished with dame school. Who learned more, boys or girls? After dame school, boys went on to another school to learn more. Girls stayed home. Most people thought reading and writing were enough for girls to know. They thought it was more important for girls to know how to spin and cook and clean house. But some people said, girls are as clever as boys. Why can't they learn too? So they taught their daughters at home. Most boys had to go to school. The law said so. The law said every town of 50 families must build a school for boys. But some towns did not have enough money to build a school. What were the schools like? The law did not say schools had to be comfortable, and most of them weren't. They were, there were hard benches to sit on. The school had only one room, which was freezing cold in the winter. The only heat came from the fireplace. Every boy had to bring firewood for the fire. If he forgot, he had to sit far away from the fire. He had to sit in the coldest part of the room. The family of every boy who went to school had to pay the schoolmaster. Often, he was paid in corn or other food. Sometimes the schoolmaster had more food than he could eat. That happened once to a schoolmaster in the town of Salem. The old schoolmaster had too much corn, so he made one of the boys stand near an open window. When the boy saw someone walking by, he tried to trade the extra corn for something the schoolmaster could use. There were no blackboards and no maps in colonial schools. There were no pencils either. Boys wrote with a lump of lead, or they wrote with a goose quill pen dipped in homemade ink. Paper was hard to get and cost a lot. Most boys wrote on birch bark. They could always get more in the woods. All they had to do was peel the bark off the birch trees. Boys spent a lot of time learning to have nice handwriting. If they wrote their words clear and small, no one cared how the words were spelled. People spelled the same words in different ways. One schoolmaster put a notice in the paper to say that he taught writing and spilling. Writing with an E-I-N-G and spilling was spelling, but it's S-P-I-L-L-I-N-G. The New England Primer was the only school book. It had many prayers. It had many questions and answers about God, and there were rhymes for each letter of the alphabet. For the letter D, the boys learned, a dog will bite a thief at night. As soon as the boys knew everything in the New England Primer, they could go to another school to learn more. Some boys were ready for college when they were only 11 years old. A few boys with rich fathers went to college in England, but most boys stopped going to school. They went to work instead. What happened if you didn't behave in school? Almost every schoolmaster in colonial days kept a birch brand handy, branch handy, and almost every schoolmaster used it to whip school boys who didn't behave. They used other punishments too. If you didn't know your lessons, you were called a dunce. You had to sit on the dunce stool and wear a dunce cap, and sometimes you had to wear leather eyeglass frames. If you whispered to a friend, you had to wear wooden whispering sticks in your mouth. And if you didn't pay attention to the schoolmaster, you had to wear a card around your neck that said, Idle Boy. What books did children read? The most important book was the Bible. Children were taught to read just so they could read the Bible. There weren't many religious books. There were serious books about manners. And there were scary stories about poems and the terrible things that would happen to children who were not good. And there were no storybooks for children. So children read storybooks that were written for grown-ups. Aesop's Fables and Robinson, Cru Robinson Crusoe. What happened if you were sick? If you were sick in colonial days, your mother would make you as comfortable as she could, just as your mother does now. She would move your bed close to the fire to keep you warm. Then she would think about the kind of medicine to give you. What kind of medicines do people use? 
plants called herbs were said to cure almost anything. If you cut yourself, herbs made the cut heal faster. If you bumped yourself, herbs made the swelling go down. There were even herbs to help me in a broken arm or leg. Every family grew their own herbs in their gardens and made their own medicines. Herbs might be good for you, but they tasted bitter. Your mother would mix the herbs in honey to make them taste better. Some people had strange ideas about medicines. A tea made of ground up, roasted toads was supposed to be good for you. Governor John Winthrop of Massachusetts Bay Colony wrote down what to do when someone had a high fever. Cut the sick man's nails and put the nails in a little bag of fine linen. Put a live eel into a tub of water. Tie the little bag of nails around the eel's neck. The eel will die and the sick man will get better. When a baby gets his first teeth, he often does not feel well. In colonial days, a mother would tie a string of berries around the baby's neck. This was supposed to make the baby feel better. But if the baby still cried, his mother tried another kind of necklace, a necklace made out of the teeth of a wolf. Anybody could sell medicine in colonial days. Sometimes the medicines that were sold were not medicines at all. Some people sold plain water and called it medicine. They put water in a fancy bottle and gave it a fancy name. Were there doctors in colonial days? There weren't many doctors. If you were very sick, your neighbor might be sent to get the nearest doctor. Your neighbor might have to ride all day before he found a doctor. Many doctors thought a good way to cure a sick man was to bleed him. The doctor would cut open a vein in the sick man's arm and let some blood flow out. If the sick man did not get better, people said it was the fault of the witches. In colonial days, many people believed in witches. They said that witches cast evil spells. It was the witches with their evil spells that made people sick, they said. What happened if you went out at night? In the town, watchman saw you out, if, if the watchman saw you outside after dark, he might say, what are you doing? Where are you going? You are supposed to be home. And if you did not have a good reason, the town watchman would scold you and take you right home. It was against the law to walk around at night, and it was a town watchman's job to see that everyone obeyed the law. The town watchman never knew what he might have to do next. Sometimes he had to take a lost cow home to its owner. Sometimes he had to be a kind of alarm clock. If someone had to take a trip early in the morning, he would ask the town watchman to wake him up. One town watchman walked the streets for three nights with a man who had such a bad toothache, he could not go to sleep. What did people do on Sunday? Sunday was the Lord's Day. It was a day to think about God. People thought about God at home, and they thought about God in their church called a meeting house. People went to the meeting house for two hours on Sunday morning. They went to the meeting house again for two hours on Sunday afternoon. Everybody had to go. Babies too. Babies who were too little to sit up straight on the wooden benches had a special place in the meeting house. They were put in wooden cages like playpens where they could lie down. Children tried not to wiggle around. They tried not to fall asleep during the long prayers, the Bible reading, the hymns, and the sermons. What happened if you fell asleep in the meeting house? If a baby fell asleep, no one cared. But if you fell asleep, you would get a rap on the head from the church watchman. The watchman was called a tithing man. It was his job to see that everyone paid attention. The tithing man carried a long pole. On one end was a furry fox tail or a squirrel tail. On the other end was a wooden knob. The tithing man used the wooden knob on the heads of the children who fell asleep or talked or giggled. He used the furry tail to tickle the noses of the old men and women who fell asleep. If anyone smiled or whispered in the meeting house, the tithing man wrote down his name. The ones who smiled or whispered had to pay a fine. Where did people eat on Sunday? When the long morning service was over, it was time for lunch. The people who lived far away from the meeting house, meeting house did not go home for lunch. They went to the Sabbath house nearby. Then back they went to the meeting house for the afternoon services. At the end of the long day, the minister told the news of the week. He had good news and he had bad news. He told who was getting married and who had a new baby. He told who had broken the laws and who had to be punished. What laws did people have to obey? There were laws that said that no one who that no one should use bad words or should drink too much. It was against the law for a baker to bake bad bread. It was against the law for a brewer to brew bad things. There were laws that said every man had to work on the town roads for a few days each month. But many people did not obey this law. That is why the roads were so bad. 
In one town, there was even a law that said every man had to shoot three crows or 12 blackbirds between the middle of March and the last day of June. What was the reason for this law? The blackbirds and the crows ate the corn and the fruit. There were special laws for poor people. A poor man's clothes could not be as fancy as the clothes of a rich man. The town of Boston had a law about dogs. The law said if a man was too poor to feed a dog, then he could not own one. A rich man could only have one dog. There were laws for every day of the week. There were special laws for Sunday. What were the special Sunday laws? The most important Sunday law was a law that said everybody had to go to the meeting house on Lord's Day. On Lord's Day, you could not laugh or play games. No one could do any work. You could not even make your bed. A man could not shave or cut his hair, and it was against the law to kiss your mother or father on Sunday. Who made all these laws? The men of the town voted for the laws. They voted at a town meeting that was held at the meeting house. No laws are passed at the town meetings. Could everyone vote in colonial days? No, women could never vote. And a man could vote only if he was a member of the church and if he owned land. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Because if you remember, they had a thing where women could not vote, and then it became where women could vote, right? Because now women can vote. What happened to people who broke the laws? People who broke the laws were punished. Punishments in colonial days were cruel. Hanging was a punishment for many crimes. If someone stole a spoon, he could be put to death. People who broke the laws were whipped at the whipping post. Some people had to sit in the stalks. They had to wear cards around the necks that told what their crimes were. What did the colonial houses look like? Houses in early colonial days were not big or fancy, and they were not warm. In winter time, a colonial house was so cold that if you were writing a letter, the ink might freeze right on your pen. To make the house warmer, the people burned giant logs in the fireplace. Some logs were so big that it took two horses to drag them in the house. How many rooms did a colonial house have? Houses in early colonial days had one room. It was called a keeping room. The family cooked and ate and worked in the keeping room. Here, too, the grown-ups and the babies slept. Older children slept in the attic. So, one room in the colonial house. And this is where most things happened was in that one room in the colonial house. And we'll read a little bit more tomorrow. All right. Now, for your what you're supposed to do with your parents today. And I hope everybody um, did your um, listening and learning and skills in today. And for your writing, it says that um, your parents were supposed to ask you to draw and write in response to today's writing journal prompt. And it said, what were some of the early English settlements in North America? And again, it's not about what I read to you, but it was about um, what were some of the early English settlements in North America. So I hope that you wrote and drew um, with your parents and hope you've done your activity pages and your skills. And also um, there's American Symbols, um, a link to that that you can read. So I um, hope you guys had a great day and I will see you um, talk with you tomorrow. All right, bye.